Hey y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. Got a story that I want to share with you from The Guardian. It came out, I want to say on yesterday, but it is about COP28. And it is so hilarious because it contradicts everything that the children of the corn have been saying. And so um, you're starting to see um, these different BRICS nations or these nations that are trying to get into BRICS counter what the children of the corn in the West are saying because they they understand that the West is trying to, excuse me, neutralize their economies by doing away with fossil fuels. If they do away with fossil fuels, then this these a lot of these um, oil producing nations would lose a lot of money because the West basically are the biggest consumers of a lot of the products that they um, make. So it says COP28 president says there is no science behind demands for a phase out of fossil fuels. Exclusive UAE Sultan Al Jabber says phase out of coal, oil, and gas would take the world back into caves, which is what they say. But, um, you know, it's just interesting watching these folks fight. I'll say that. So it says the president of COP28, Al, Sultan Al Jabber, has claimed there is no science indicating that a phase out of fossil fuels is needed to restrict global heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius, the Guardian and the Center for Climate Reporting can reveal. Al Jabber also said a phase out of fossil fuels would not allow sustainable development unless you want to take the world back into caves, which is what the powers that be want to do. Because they're trying to stop the judgment. They know the world about to get hot. Because it's going to be destroyed by fire and not water. So they doing what they can to hide that fact from the children of the corn who are ignorant and think nothing is ever going to happen to their precious lands and their precious countries because they are number one and they always rule and they'll always rule. Esau's rule is coming to an end and Jacob's rule is getting ready to begin. And so the powers that be understand what's coming and they are doing everything they can to hide that fact. So, so the comments were incredibly concerning and verging on climate denial, scientists said. And they were at odds with the position of the UN Secretary, Antonio Guterres. Guterres. Al Jabber made the comments in ill-tempered responses to questions from Mary Robinson, the chair of the elders group and a former UN special envoy for climate change during a live event online on November 21st, as well as running COP28 in Dubai. Al Jabber is also the chief executive of the United Arab Emirates State Oil Company, ADNOC, which many observers see as a serious conflict of interest. So it says more than 100 countries already support a phase out of fossil fuels and whether the final COP28 agreement calls for this use, this or uses or uses weaker language such as phase down is one of the most fiercely fought issues at the summit and may be the key determinant of its success. Deep and rapid cuts are needed to bring fossil fuel emissions to zero and limit fast worsening climate impacts. So this is why I'm telling you, like over the next couple of years, you're going to see they're going to try to, you know, penalize you for having a fuel power car. They're going to levy taxes. They're going to penalize you. Um, and again, you're going to have to have the digital wallet and a digital ID in order to buy fuel. So everything that you do is going to be tracked. And you're going to have to, um, you know, there's going to be some reporting involved. Um, so it's just going to be an interesting time. But notice that uh, Congress has already tried to pass legislation in the House, I think, the other day, um, saying that they're going to phase out fossil fuels. Now, it's not going to pass the Senate, but understand 
Democratic Party controls the House of Representatives and they have already passed something. So they may try to hold on to it until, you know, sit on it until they get whoever they want in the Senate or they're going to try to change or shift the Senate so they could pass that unless there's some executive order done, which I don't know if Papa can do that or not, but they doing what they want to do anyway. So who knows? Al Jabber spoke with Robinson at a She Changes Climate event. Robinson said, we're in an absolute crisis that is hurting women and children more than anyone. Why are the women and children hurting and the men not hurting? I don't even understand this logic, but you see how they be coming up with all these dramatic um, fake, compelling, lifetime uh, channel stories about women and children and they decenter men to uh, try to compel the heartstrings of folks and say that women and, and children are going to be hurting more than anything. But what about the men? They don't, they don't hurt from, from climate change. How you just exclude a whole gender of people, a whole group of human beings, just women and children. You can't have no women and children without men. They help procreate. So why aren't they important in equation? They help make stuff. They help do stuff. So, um, you know, understand that this is uh, the programming that is going on and has been going on for a long time. This feminist um, uh, children centered movement and a push to exclude men from everything, because I guess they're going to remove. I mean, they can't completely remove y'all from society, but I guess I, I don't know what these people plan on doing. It's just weird. And it's because we have not yet committed to phasing out fossil fuel. That is the one decision that COP28 can take. And in many ways, because you're head of ADNOC, you could actually take it with more credibility. Jabber said, quote, I accepted to come to this meeting to have a sober and mature conversation. I'm not in any way signing up to any discussion that is alarmist. There is no science out there or no scenario out there that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what's going to achieve 1.5 degrees Celsius. And I, that took me out. <laughs> I was crying. I was like, Woo! <laughs> Somebody said it. I didn't say that. I think it all the time, but I didn't say it. So I'm glad somebody else said it. Robinson challenged him further saying, I read your that your company is investing in a lot more fossil fuel in the future. And Al Jalber responded, quote, you're reading your own media, which is biased and wrong. I am telling you, I am the man in charge, end quote. Then Al Jalber said, quote, Please help me. Show me the roadmap for a phase out of fossil fuel that will allow for sustainable socioeconomic development unless you don't have, unless you don't want to take the world back into the caves. Unless you want to take the world back into caves, end quote. And so um, then he said, I don't think you will be able to help solve the climate problem by pointing fingers or contributing to the polarization and the divide that is already happening in the world. Show me the solutions. Stop the pointing fingers. Stop it, end quote, Al Jabber said. So there's the riff right there. The oil people is like, you ain't getting ready to cut us out of our money. And y'all going to be building all these lithium batteries for solar electric cars and da 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 and we just gonna be over here. Oh no, we's part of bricks now. We's the pappy, and you are the cheerings. So um, it's just interesting watching these dynamics play out. And I will keep an eye on you know him to see what happens to him in the coming future because he might uh, meet some troubles. I just say that the best I can.
So it says Gutierrez told COP28 delegates on Friday, the science is clear. They don't never tell you what the science is, though. The 1.5 degrees Celsius limit is only possible if we ultimately stop burning all fossil fuels, not reduce, not abate, phase out with a clear time frame. So here you go. The man said they're going to be phased out. So then when I keep telling you about you ain't going to be able to drive your car, you ain't going to have gas stove, you won't have gas heat. I mean it. These people ain't playing with us. They already got this stuff ready to roll out. Bill Hare, the executive of Climate Analytics, said this is an extraordinary, revealing, worrying, and belligerent exchange. Quote, sending us back to the caves is the oldest of fossil fuel industry tropes. It's verging on climate denial. So anytime you oppose anything they say, you're an alarmist or a climate denialist. Quote, Al Jabber is asking for a 1.5 degree roadmap. Anyone who cares can find that in the International Energy Agency's latest net zero emissions scenario, which says there cannot be any new fossil fuel development. The science is absolutely clear and, the absolute, and that absolutely means a phase out by mid-century, which is 2030, which will enhance the lives of all of humanity. Professor Sir David King, the chair of the Climate Crisis Advisory Group and a former UK chief scientist, scientific advisor, Children of the Corn, said, it is incredibly concerning and surprising to hear the COP28 president defend the use of fossil fuels. It is undeniable that to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we must all rapidly reduce carbon emissions and phase out the use of fossil fuels by 2035 at the latest. But if they got anything to do with it, you're going to be off of them fossil fuels before then, buddy. The alternative is an unimaginable, unmanageable future for humanity. They're going to be hot. We're going to be fine. But see, they can't take the sun. They need darkness. We good with the sun. We built for this. We came from the motherland. Now, we might be a little comfortable, but the most high done made our skin where we could take this heat. We've been living in the deserts forever. The only people need to phase out this stuff is them children of the corn with that skin that need sunscreen and then burns. And Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Y'all know. It's not us. The science of climate um, change has been clear for decades. We need to stop burning fossil fuels. Like, I don't really understand that. I just don't understand that. We need to stop burning fossil fuels, but yet we still fly planes. They fly planes to Dubai. They flew to COP28. They have shipping containers, um, you know, shipping cargo ships that ship all kinds of their products all over the globe. They run by fossil fuels. Don't nobody have nothing to say about that. Um, they have huge mansions. They ain't downsizing and living in no single family dwellings. They have huge homes that use a lot of things that um, help if, if they say the environment is heating up, that help um, heat up the environment. They make computers, like the computer guy who knows all things. Do you know how much heat a computer, a laptop emits, a desktop, um, cell phones, all these things that they make, they put out heat. Um, and they help heat up the environment, but they don't stop making them. They steady making chips and steady making phones and steady making things that can be connected to the internet to keep your face glued to them all day long so that you will be... Um, a part of the beast infrastructure. So nothing that they say ever makes any sense if you think about it. Um, Dr. Frederick, Frederick, Frederick Otto of Imperial College, London, UK said, quote, 
The science of climate change has been clear. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I already read that. Otto also rejected the claim that fossil fuels were necessary for development in poorer countries, saying that the latest report from the Intergover Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change shows that the UN's sustainable development goals are not achievable by continuing the current fossil driven high emission economies. There are massive co-benefits that come with changing to a fossil free world. They're gonna not use fossil fuel, but they're gonna dig up all those rocks out of the earth for lithium and cobalt and whatever other stuff they can dig out to make these batteries. A spokesperson for, for COP28 said the IEA and the IPCC 1.5 degrees Celsius scenarios clearly state that fossil fuels will have to play a role in the future energy system, albeit a small one. The COP president was quoting the science and leading climate experts. He has clearly said that the oil and gas industry must tackle scope one and two emissions, must invest in clean energy and clean technologies to address scope three emissions, and that all industry and that all industry must align around keeping the North Star of 1.5 degrees Celsius within reach. Once again, that is clearly part of the continued effort to undermine the COP presidency's tangible achievements and a misrepresentation of our position and success to date. So they got a riff. The spokesperson said that the presidency had operationalized the loss and damage fund with more than 700 million, launched a 30 billion private market climate vehicle and brought 51 oil companies to agree decarbonization targets and 119 countries to sign a pledge to triple renewable energy. This is just the beginning, the spokesperson said. Al Jaber is also head of Mazdar, the UAE's renewable energy company. Oh, there's a conflict of interest all the way around. But his appointment as COP28 president has been controversial. Shortly before the summit, do leaked documents showed that the UAE had planned to use climate meetings with governments to promote oil and gas deals. Al Jaber denied having seen or used the talking points in the documents. Adnoc also has the largest net zero busting expansion plans for oil and gas, according to independent analysis, which don't really mean nothing to me. The issue of a phase out or phase down is complicated by the terms not having agreed definitions and by the highly uncertain role of technologies to abate emissions such as carbon capture and storage. Keeping the Paris Agreement targets alive will require a fossil fuel phase out, not a vague phase out, phase down relying on unproven technologies, said Otto. So they would rather do that to, to meet Paris Agreement targets without looking at how those things will impact us at an individual level. More than 100 African, European, Pacific, and Caribbean countries back a phase out of unabated fossil fuels. So everybody, all the raccoons is joining in on this. The U.S., the world's biggest oil and gas producer, also backs a phase out. So the United States also supports doing away with fossil fuels, which is why I keep telling you, we ain't going to have cars. You need to be living close to wherever you're going to be living. Your job, be able to access food, be in walking distance. And they want you to be in these 15-minute cities anyway. So that's that's the concept for the 15-minute city. That's This is why they can say that. Because the majority of people live near city centers so they can enact these 15-minute cities and do all this stuff. Others, such as Russia, Saudi Arabia, and China, reject the call. So notice the BRICS nations are rejecting the call for the phase out of fossil fuels. Both options are on the table at COP28, as well as proposals to only mention coal or not say anything about at all about fossil fuels. In COP26 in Glasgow in 2021, agreed for the first time to phase out coal use 
but this has been watered down from phase out to at, at the last minute bringing the COP26 president um, president Alok Sharma to tears. In his conversation with Robinson, Al Jabber also said, a phase down and a phase out of fossil fuel, in my view, is inevitable. That is essential, but we need to be real serious and pragmatic about it. Hold on, let me just explain, he said. The world will continue to need energy sources. We, the UAE, are the only ones in the world today that have been decarbonizing the oil and gas resources. We have the lowest carbon intensity. But I think I read something where Al Gore was like, nope, y'all lying. So everybody just saying whatever they want to say. Everybody just pulling stuff, tricks out their butt. This refers to the emissions from the energy used to extract fossil fuels, not the far larger emissions from burning the fuels. There is no such thing as low carbon or lower carbon oil and gas, said Otto. Numerous commentators have said that the negative or embarrassing revelations about Al Jabber and Adnock increased the pressure on him to deliver a strong COP28 deal. The Guardian reported recently that state-run UAE oil and gas fields have been flaring gas almost daily despite having committed 20 years ago to a policy of zero routine flaring. <laughs> well, what? I'll tell you anything just to get you off my back. I'm going to go home and keep on doing what I was doing. That's what's happening. That's what everybody is doing. The Guardian previously reported that Adnock had been able to read emails to and from the COP28 office until the Guardian raised the issue in June, and the UAE had also failed to report its oil industry's emissions of powerful greenhouse, greenhouse gas methane. Uh Harjeet Singh, a climate action network at Climate Action Network, said COP28 must deliver a decision on phasing out fossil fuels in a just and equitable manner. So they say it must. They must do this. So it must be going to happen without any loopholes or escape routes for the industry to continue expanding and exacerbating the climate crisis. So we have trouble on the horizon. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not um, they're able to get away with not phasing out the fossil fuels. I'll be interested in looking at the language um, that comes out in any future legislation, but it seems like the legislation that was proposed in the House is to phase out all fossil fuel, and I want to say by 2026. Uh, I'm not sure because I know that's when the electric cars are so, supposed to start rolling off the assembly lines with the kill switches. But in any event, this is important because if they pass any legislation to ban fossil fuels, it will mean you will not have any fossil fuels to put in your current existing cars to run them. And that means you will have to buy a um, electric car or pay a penalty for using your car and they may require it to be retrofitted in some kind of way. So there's gonna be some type of financial um, punishment for keeping your gas powered vehicles or fossil fuel powered vehicles or using any sort of uh, fossil fuels for heating, for fuel, for whatever, for farming. So I don't know what this is gonna look like, but just imagine if farmers can't use um, fuel to run their machinery. How is food gonna get to the stores? If, if you gotta rely on electric trucks to drive cows, chickens and pigs to the processing plants to be slaughtered so that you will have meat in your stores your meat might you might not never have no meat because it's it's not sustainable the technology is is not where you could drive across the country in a reasonable amount of time they don't have the uh, chargers the charging stations to um uh, they haven't scaled them in a manner that will allow people to move and transport stuff in that way. Um, 
I don't, I just don't see how it's going to work. Not in this short period of time. Most most companies are not ready. I don't see no electric nothing driving around on the streets now. And just imagine in two years. Like, how? Even if people went out and bought a fleet of electric somethings. Like, you can't charge those things. Like, nothing would ever get done. Can you imagine the mailman using electric cars trying to deliver mail? I mean, what you going to do? Carry extra batteries with you? It, <clears throat> this stuff don't make no sense. Now, I don't know if y'all sit around and work out stuff in your brain like I do, but I don't see how it's going to work. I don't care what they say. They can say they can have the best intentions. It's not going to work. And the only way it will work is if they just become draconian and are like, we don't care what you don't have. If you, you don't have a car, walk. Get a bike. Do the best you can. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, they don't care if you have food in the store, which is why I'm concerned about, you know, I always mention food because we can't live without food or water. Um, so this is why growing your own food is essential and will be essential. Having seeds, um, heirloom seeds is going to be essential because if you got to wait on electric cars and electric trucks to transport your stuff and farmers don't have uh, can't use fossil fuels, so they got to use electric stuff, and that stuff got to be charged because it don't last but a few hours. If you got bad cells and the battery don't work or whatever, storm hit it, it catch on fire, <clears throat> or there's flooding and the equipment is damaged and it takes weeks or months to get it repaired or replaced. Um, it's got to be disposed of a certain way and it's, it's got to be paid for. And if you can't dispose of it, you know what happens to it. Like this stuff is insane. So it, like society is not going to transition well. I'm just telling you from a risk management, just a business, a basic risk management assessment. Our society is not going to, tr- is we won't transition well. A lot of people will be harmed. A lot of people will perish. Um, a lot of businesses will suffer, close down. They're gonna be, there's going to be a lot of loss, all types of loss. Loss of life, loss of finances, loss of businesses, loss of communities, loss of supply chain systems, um, loss of livelihoods. Let me talk about farming and people who have family-owned grocery stores and um Food producers, processors, people who process food after they come from the, after the foods come um, and meats come from the farmers. So it's just a lot of stuff that's going to be impacted. We don't necessarily think about. So I want y'all to um, really take this under consideration and understand how important it is. This phase out of fossil fuel will have huge, a huge impact on all of us. We are going to be the collateral damage. So this is why it's very important for you to continue to prep. We don't know how long we're going to be here. We don't know when, you know, when we're going to get into the thick of things, if we're going to be here. What we do know is we have been warned. They're telling us what's coming and it is upon is incumbent upon us to think these things out critically, to plan accordingly, to pray for discernment so that we know what to do, how to do it, what we need to have, who we need to prepare for, who we need to include in our plans, who we should exclude. Um, we need to understand who the adversaries are, what they look like, what they're talking like, who's harming us, who's helping us who's speaking the truth, who's telling lies. We we really need to think these things out and not take any of these stories for granted because um, the hour is coming where there's going to be famine. You're going to have lean years and you're going to have, well, we live in the best time now. Lean years are coming. Scarcity is going to be created. And this is how these stupid um thoughtless ways they're going to enact these policies so that they can institute these agendas that they've created to delete people from the earth. 
we have to be prepared for the worst. You got to be prepared for scarcity. And that's what, in my opinion, that was my takeaway from this. No matter what they're talking about, we have to be prepared for scarcity and loss. Because once that happens, it's just going to be, um, you know, snowball effect. Supply chain will be impacted. Your jobs will be impacted. Your children's school will be impacted. If you rely on school to babysit your kids while you go to work, that will be impacted. Or your grandchildren. Um, everything's going to be impacted. So don't think that it's just going to be a smooth transition. And they say this. It's going to be rough. And these next two years are going to be very telling. You're going to start seeing a lot of stuff happen. You're going to be looking around. A lot of things are going to change. Um and there's really not much we can do about it. Um, we can speak out. We can teach other people the signs and try to uh, do better about, um, you know, being mindful of how we prepare individually for what's coming. But other than that, you know, all we can do is to try to shake people and wake people up because it's a lot of people not going to be prepared for when the supply chain breaks down. Um, the phase out of coal, oil, and gas, man, people going to freeze to death because they're not going to be able to afford the new things that they come out with. Uh, people are going to be stranded because they're not going to be able to drive their automobiles. So their livelihoods are going to change. Um, I just don't, I don't know. Gas stations going to go out of business or they're going to have to convert to being charging stations, it's just going to be wild. But in any event, we're watching everything unfold. These are the policies that are um, the takeaways from COP28. This is where the Pope spoke. And so he said what he said, and we're going to see who goes along with it and who does not. But one thing for sure, baby Rome, which is the West and America, is going along with it. Uh, so if you're here in America, you're in the West, you're in Canada, Australia, um, get ready because it's coming. Children of the corn are busy and um, we are the collateral damage. So that's all I got. Leave your thoughts in the comment sections. Um but keep prepping, keep praying, keep seeking the most high because there's no way we're going to be able to deal with all the calamity and deletions. Um, and it's just going to be a lot, especially for the people who did not pay attention and who are not awake. So just make sure you are ready. Your house needs to be ready. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified each and every time I upload new content. Subscribe to my Rumble and Odyssey channels in the event that this channel goes down. I will have backup content. All of my old videos are on Odyssey and I can produce uh, new content on Rumble. Follow me on social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram. In the event that my channel goes down, I will notify you there and you at least know what happened to me. So um, if I'm gone for any extended period of time or once I found out, uh, find out I'm booted, then I'll just give y'all a heads up. But I expect anything and everything at this point. Um, lastly, if you'd like to support the channel, links are in the description. This is a labor of love. So your donations are, um, greatly appreciated. And if you've already contributed in the past, I really do appreciate it. Um, thank you to, uh, anyone who shares information on this channel. Um, we are a family, although we're small, we are still a family and we, um, are trying to navigate these in times it's a little rough and it's a little scary but you know these data points help us navigate uh what's coming and it helps us understand where we are in the big scheme of things so let's pray to be found worthy to escape and keep on prepping y'all this is marty k and i am out